squared distribution. And <clears throat> unlike everything that we've done thus far, it is not symmetric and bell shaped. It is actually skewed to the right. Um, now, this is not symmetric, skewed to the right. So we have a long right tail. Chi squared distribution, I, you can see this, this notation. Your chi squared critical values look like this. Um, you can see it here. This is a chi-squared distribution. That's the notation. That's the variable that represents chi-squared. We say chi-squared. It's another Greek letter, chi. Um, now, uh, again, I didn't get all of this, but you can see that the chi-squared distribution um, also is dependent on sample size. And the larger the sample size, again, obviously, the more it approaches a symmetric type of form. So you can see the green here have, have 20 degrees of freedom and the purple, red, whatever the heck color that is, has 10 degrees of freedom. So, you know, degrees of freedom, again, similar to what we did with the student T distribution is dependent on sample size. So N minus one are your degrees of freedom. And because the shape of a chi-squared distribution is also dependent on sample size, um, the larger the sample size, the closer to a symmetric bell-shaped curve we are. However, still skewed to the right. Um, but we're going to need degrees of freedom because the shape of the curve is dependent on sample size. So um, we're going to need degrees of freedom again here. This is what a chi-squared critical value looks like. There are two types that you're going to need for what you guys are going to do. You're going to do a confidence interval for a standard deviation, which requires these types of critical values off of a chi-squared distribution table. And you have two of them. You have a chi-squared right-tailed critical value and a chi-squared left-tailed critical value. So the R stands for you know, right-tailed. So the chi-squared left-tailed critical value will be, you know, obviously in the left tail, and the right tailed critical value will be obviously in the right tail. So located here, right tail located here. Now you can see that the chi-squared critical values or the distribution starts at zero. So it's not symmetric, right? It's not bell-shaped. Zero is not in the center. The left tail chi-squared critical value is not the same as the right tail. Um, they're not opposites like they would be if we were on a standard normal distribution curve. Um, and then all of these critical values are positive. So the values of pi square can be zero or positive, but they cannot be negative. You'll never see negative values for a chi squared critical, uh, critical value. Um, chi squared distribution is different for each number of degrees of freedom. As the number of degrees of freedom increases, the chi squared distribution approaches a normal distribution. Um, same thing as student T. However, this one starts skewed to the right. So <clears throat> how do we find these right-tailed and left-tailed chi-squared critical values, which will be different numbers, both positive. Um, obviously, we're going to be increasing from left to right, so the right-tailed critical value will always be larger than the left-tailed critical value. And we're going to need, oops, we're going to need our table, our chi-squared critical value table, which I said was table A4 in the packet that I sent you guys, okay? So if you can look at that real quick, just to kind of introduce it, and then we'll look at critical values, you'll see that you need the area to the right of the critical value that you want. So that's what these numbers represent, area to the right of the critical value that you want. And then we need degrees of freedom to determine in the body of this table our chi-squared critical value. So we're always talking now about the area to the right. So sometimes we talk about the area to the left of the critical value. Sometimes we talk about the area to the right. Know which distribution you are on and know, you know which area you're looking for. It all depends on what type of critical value you want, what type of distribution you are on, what type of table you are using. In this case, area to the right. I mean, it says it here, but, you know, remember. <laughs> anyway. So, all right, so let's go back to this and let's actually determine a chi-squared critical value. Um, so you're gonna need to determine area, right? So the initial part is not really gonna change. I'll show you what I mean. Maybe it's you. Okay. So number five, we'll look at here. Um, 
Okay. So number five says, so here, in exercises five through eight, we're going to do them all. Find the number of degrees, blah, blah, blah. Find the critical values. We won't do the confidence interval yet. We'll just find the critical values for this situation. Now, for number five, I have a 95% confidence level. Confidence level. CL, confidence level. And this is the same thing as what we did before. This is going to give me alpha. Alpha is the complement of the confidence level. So in this case, you know, 1 minus 0.95 or 0 0.05. So my alpha is 0 0.05, right? The complement of the confidence level. Always 1 minus the confidence level. We're going to divide it into two pieces because we're going to have two areas, right and left tail. So we're going to need alpha, which is 0 0.05, and then cut it in half, divided by 2, 0 0.025. So this initial stuff is the same thing as what we did before. Technically, no change. Now, though, if I draw my curve, I'm drawing a symmetric, uh, non-symmetric curve. I'm drawing a skewed to the right curve. I'm going to label it as a chi-squared distribution curve, right? The um, value that starts here is zero. I'm going to take some of my area and put it in the right tail. 0 0.025, right? half of alpha, and then I'm going to take the other half of alpha and stick it in my left tail, 0 0.025. My left-tailed chi-squared critical value is located in the left tail, so this would be, I'll do, it for you. I'll do yellow as my left-tailed chi-squared left tail, and I'll do red as my right tail, okay? My right-tailed chi-squared critical value here. So I want the value located here separating this from the rest of the curve, and I want the one here separating this from the rest. Now, I have everything I need. Um, there might be one more thing that I need, actually, because if I look at my table, it asks for degrees of freedom. So I'm, I do need degrees of freedom, because my curve depends on that as well. So let's find that. Not difficult to find, though. As long as I'm given my sample size, degrees of freedom are always n minus 1. In this case, n is... 25, so 24 are my degrees of freedom. Um, so because the um, table always asks for the area to the right of the critical value that you want, I'm going to find the right-tailed chi-squared critical value first, because that will be the easiest, and then I will do the left-tailed chi-squared critical value. So let me go back to my table. And let's go and look at this one. So we know the area to the right of the critical value is 0 0.025. So let's go to the table and see the area to the right of the critical value is 0 0.025 here, right? And what did I say? 24 degrees of freedom here. So I'm going to line up this column and this row, 24 degrees of freedom, 0 0.025 area to the right. So I get 39.364, 39.364. So let me go back to my table, and my thing here. 39.364 is my right-tailed chi-squared critical value. So this is, I'm gonna say approximately 39.364, approximately because the table approximates it. So I have one of my critical values already. Now, um, I, I always need two though, for this kind of situation. So I need the other one, which is the left tail chi squared critical value. Um, the only thing, though, is that, again, I don't know the area to the right of this critical value, correct? I know the area to the left of this chi squared critical value is 0 0.025. So before I go to the table to determine this chi squared critical value, I need to figure out what the area to the right of that value is. But that's not difficult because we've done stuff like this before, right? Um, if I have the area to the left as 0 0.025, then the area to the right would have to be 1 minus 0 0.025, which is 0 0.975, okay? So again, the table requires you to find or give the area to the right of the critical value that you want. And in this case, with the left-tailed chi-squared critical value, I know the area to the left of it, so I need to do 1 minus that to determine the area to the right of it. Because remember, the total area under the curve is still 1. This is not changing from what we've done before. 
0.975. So now I'm going to go to my table again. And I'm going to line up still the same degrees of freedom, 24, but the area to the right of the critical value is 0.975. So the third column here with 24 degrees of freedom gives me 12.401. So my left tailed pi squared critical value for this case is 12.401. So let's go back here. And what I say? 12.401. So the left tail chi square critical value is approximately 12.401. So I got my two critical values for this particular kind of situation where I have a 95% confidence and a 25 sample size.